Hi, welcome. I'm Miss Starman. Hey, and I'm Miss Edwards. So nice to have you. Thank you for viewing our orientation video. Now, let's pray for just a few minutes and then we will get on with everything that we need to tell you today. So let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that we are able to come and show our parents this video today. Lord, thank you for allowing us to be able to go back to school in person. And Lord, I just pray that you would give us your safety, that you would help us, Lord, to uh, stay safe this school year, and that these boys and girls would learn the things they need to learn. And Lord, especially when they're doing their Bible lessons, Lord, we just pray that they would come to know you better through some lessons that they learned this year. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So let me introduce myself. My name is Miss Jarman. I am a graduate of Meredith College. Um, when I graduated, I got a job teaching first grade at Contentia Savannah. During my six years teaching there, um, I had the honor of being Lenore County Teacher of the Year. Then I got pregnant and stayed home for a little while and then um, started doing some private tutoring for my home. Um, then I was approached by our pastor at Bethel to come along and start helping him as administrative assistant. Did that for a year and a half and then the Lord opened the door to return to teaching. Um, I taught third grade for two years but then the door really opened and I got to teach my passion which is first grade and this is my third year teaching first grade with Miss Edwards at BCA. Um, I am married to a wonderful man named Ashley Jarman. We've been married for 14 years. We have one son. He is nine and a half years old, and he'll be going into fourth grade here at Bethel. We have two dogs. I have to mention those. Addie, our little black dog, and Miles, our big, big dog. Hey, I'm Miss Edwards. I'm the older one of the two. Anyway, I have so enjoyed teaching uh, first grade with Mrs. Jarman. I'm a graduate of East Carolina University and I have taught first grade forever. <laughs> this is my 33rd year at Bethel Christian Academy and I love it. I would not move anywhere. I love six and seven year olds. Um, I have been married to my husband Bud for 46 years. That's a long time, isn't it? But I wouldn't trade it for anything. We have been very happy. I have three grown children and they all have children. In fact, I have seven grandchildren. I probably don't look that old. But anyway, I have seven grandchildren. And will you believe it? Five, yes, five of them are attending Bethel this year. I have a kindergartner. I have a first grader who will be in Miss Jarman's room. I have a fifth grader, a sixth grader, and a ninth grader. I Ooh. think that's it. That's five, I hope. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that's just a little bit about us. And now we're going to go over some of the things that we hope will help you to have a really good first grade year. So we are wanting to go over the school supplies with you. Not the entire list, but we've had a couple of questions and so we wanted to show you some of the things that we're asking for. So in our list, it asks for a soap dish or a crayon box. This is just exactly what it is. It's so whenever their box falls apart, this will last them a good long time. We also asked for a button folder. This is the one we get the most questions for. This is the button folder. And inside the button folder, this is why we want this. So that they'll have their reading book and that they'll have their reading calendar in it. So if you're looking for a button folder, this is it. And they also come as zippers. Either one is fine, whatever you prefer, whatever your child prefers. And we also want a change of clothes. We all know that accidents can happen, especially in first grade. So if you'll bring a change of clothes for your child, Make sure it's summer, and then as the seasons change, we'll send you a reminder for some winter clothes. Also, water fountains, off limits for this school year. So we're asking for water bottles. If you want your child to have a cute water bottle and then just send some water that they can refill it throughout the day, then we're totally fine with that. But they will need some water, especially when we're going outside and getting hot and sweaty. And we would like a pencil box. This was not on the first list that we sent out. The pencil box is to keep their things individual for their stuff. So make sure you have a pencil box. It can even be a cute one. There's some really cute ones out there. 
Now let's go to some homeroom general information. Um, as far as arrival time, that is exactly the same. 7.50 to 8 o'clock in the morning. The tardy bell rings at 8. Absences up to 26 are allowed. If your child is absent, then you need to send a text to us and let us know, okay? Um, you have three unexcused absences in a nine-week period, and that will result in a detention. We don't want that to happen. Um, and six tardies or early checkouts will result in detention. Pre-approved absence forms can be picked up in the office. Also, make sure that you're checking your child's temperature in the morning. There's a form that you can get an app on your phone. I know the office has sent you some information about that. Make sure you're filling that out. That's to keep our kids safe so that we know that they are all symptom free when they come into our classrooms. Now, this year we will be having PE in the gym and we have it on Fridays. So on Friday, they need to make, you need to make sure that your child is wearing tennis shoes and they need to wear shorts or they can wear pants. Girls, no dresses or skorts because they're gonna be on the floor and doing exercises and all those kinds of things. So you want to make sure that they'll be modest. And uh, so that's on Friday. And then they'll need to wear uh, a Bethel shirt. It can be our class t-shirt. Last year they let them wear any uh, Bethel shirt and I assume it's that way this year. But it'll make, need to be some kind of Bethel t-shirt that they wear. And that's every Friday. And then for lunch, it's exactly the same as what they did in kindergarten, uh, except for our lunch will be in the morning. Now for first grade, we don't have a snack time. So they need to make sure, you need to make sure that they eat a really, really good breakfast so that they won't be so hungry. Uh, and then we eat lunch about five minutes till 11. And then, uh, so they're going from lunchtime all the way to three o'clock with nothing to eat. So. Please encourage your child to eat their lunch and make mm -hmm. sure you're packing something that they will eat. Um, this year with our lunches, they're going to be like in little uh, takeout containers with the lid closed so that uh, the lunchroom ladies and the, well, not the lunchroom ladies, but the people who are in line getting those lunches, they won't be breathing on their lunches. So it will be closed container and they'll just take those containers. It'll have their fork and everything, napkin in there, and they'll just take it to the table. And we're going to try to do some social distancing while we're in the cafeteria, maybe every other chair, uh, as best that we can. Um, all lunch orders will be made through RenWeb in the morning. There's no microwaveable lunches. We don't microwave because we just will not have time to go to the microwave and do that for them. We have, what, about 25 minutes for lunch. And so uh, send them something in a thermos if it needs to be warmed and you warm it up before they come to school. Um, we're not for purchasing <clears throat> anything uh, out of the vending machines. They can't buy drinks or snacks or anything out of the vending machine. So that's our lunch time for first grade. Now, before <coughs> and after school. Before school, um, if you need to arrange childcare from 7 to 7.25, our own Miss Edwards does morning care. So you would get dropped off, your child would get dropped off and go to Miss Edwards. Now, this is an additional cost. Then, if you're looking at something from 7.30 to 7.50, you would just drop your child off at the cafeteria. We are not allowing parents to come inside, so you will need to drop them off. So if you're dropping off at 7.50 to 8, just drop them off and let them come in their themselves. Um, as far as after school, this is very important. Car pickup for first grade is on the daycare side. So you're going to go to Highway 258, come in that entrance and go out that way you're going to consider that a blessing because we don't have to deal with any other of the traffic. So we have our own little place, first and second grade. Now, if you have a kindergarten student, we will send your first grader to the kindergarten pickup. If you have older children at Bethel, they will come to the first grade pickup. Um, and then if you're doing aftercare, let us know about that as well. All right, <clears throat> we are going to have a class t-shirt that we will use and wear at different times during the year. Um, one t-shirt is included in the tuition, but if you would like to have more than one t-shirt, 
that would be eight more dollars. So just let us know uh, whether you want an extra one or not. But like I said, the first one is already, you've already paid for it in your tuition. So now let's go over communication. How are you going to know how your child is doing? Well, one thing, every Tuesday you will receive test folders. What we would like for you to do is look over those test folders, review them. If your child's missed anything, kind of go over it with them. Sign it and return those test folders to us. They will be in a red folder just like this. This will be their test folder. Any messages that will be sent will be sent using the Class Dojo app. That just allows us to send out one text at one time instead of sending 28 different texts out. So make sure that you've signed up for that. Um, most of you have already done that, so thank you very much for that. Um, as far as RenWeb, that's where you'll see grades posted and homework. If you don't have RenWeb, you want to make sure that you get that. So you can always see what kind of homework they have and what their grades are looking like. Now, something new that we've added this year. In case we need to pivot and move online, we want to be ready. And so uh, our whole school is requiring that we have assignments on Seesaw. So every single week, starting the first full week, we will have homework on Seesaw. They will have two assignments. They will have a phonics assignment from me and a math assignment from Ms. Edwards. We'll assign that on Monday and it is due on Fridays. Now they will be graded. Some will be more of a participation where others will be a true grade. We're just trying to make sure that we are ready if we have to pivot and go online. So no big surprises this year, hopefully. Now, our policies. No electronic devices or toys will be used in class. So if we're doing something special, a show and tell or something, we'll let you know. But regular day, don't send those. Dress code. Boys, pants, shorts, and polo shirts. Girls, dresses to or below the knee or a polo shirt and pants and a skirt. As far as mask, yes, each child needs a mask. Anytime we're out in the hallway, we'll be wearing our mask. As soon as we come in the room, we'll take those masks off. But each child does need a mask. If your child needs any kind of medication given to them, please make sure that you contact the homeroom teacher so we can make those arrangements as well. Now, let's get to the academics. I have the pleasure of teaching Bible, and I love it. It's my favorite subject that I get to teach each and every day. So each day I will be going over a Bible lesson with them. On Thursdays, we'll have chapel, and that's when we have a special speaker come in and share what the Lord has laid on their heart. We will have a weekly Bible verse for the kids to memorize as well. Now, we go over this many times in class. Try to teach some actions for it as well. Mm -hmm. And I hope to post some videos on Seesaw or on Class Dojo of you seeing me do the actions so that'll help you work with your child with that this year. All right, well, the next thing, next to Bible, I think, is one of the most important subjects is reading. And uh, Ms. Jarman and I will both be teaching reading to our homework, homeroom students. Um, sometimes we'll do it as a whole group, and sometimes we'll do it as small groups. Um, we'll have little quizzes during the week, little seat work quizzes over what they have read. Um, and then all grades will begin that second nine weeks. Now what that is, uh, we will listen to uh, the students read, and we'll be listening for uh, are they smooth when they're reading? Like, for instance, if we're reading, um, she is going to town. Do they re does she read like this? She is going to town. That's not good reading, mm -hmm. isn't it? But a lot of times when they come to, to first grade from kindergarten, that's how they're reading. Mm -hmm. So we're going to work on that fluency. We're going to want them to go, did she go to, did she come to town or... Is she going to go to town? So we want them reading smoother, and you can uh, help them with this at home. You can show them. You can model. If they're reading word by word at home, you can read the sentence 
like it should be read and then let them read it after you. That's the way you can model how it's supposed to be read. Also put some expression in it. Look at the uh, punctuation marks that, that, that's at the end. Is it a question mark? Then you need to ask it. Read it like it's a question. If it's excitement, oh my goodness, there's a fire. Oh. Then put that expression in there. Let them know. We don't want, oh, there is a fire. No, we don't want them to read it like that. We want to put them, we want some good readers when they get out of first grade. And they will be. But Miss Jarman and I need your help. Absolutely. We cannot do it all when we're sitting in that classroom. You have got to read with them every day. For 50 minutes? No. For 45 minutes? Mm -mm. That's way too long. Maybe 10 minutes? And if they can't tolerate 10 minutes, five minutes, and then do it another five minutes. You know, I'd rather you do it more frequently than do it for 30 minutes and they're sitting there saying, oh no, have I got to read again? No, no. no. If they come to a word that they don't know, first of all, say, okay, let's sound that word out. Now, after they try, then you just tell them the word. Don't let them sit there for 50, I mean, for 10 times saying, is it this, is it this? No. You know, just say, all right, what does that word start with? How many vowels are in that word? Those kinds of things help them to be able to look at that word and figure it out on their own. Now, we'll have homework that you have to do for three days, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. And uh, they need to read, your assignment will be on our calendar, and they need to read those pages, and you need to sign, or grandma, or daddy, whoever's gonna listen to them, that they have read it. Now, they probably might also be bringing their books home on Wednesday and Friday for the weekend. That's okay, they may not have homework, but you can go back over some assignments that they've had previously, and then help them practice. And any time you want to read extra stuff, boy, that's a given. That, that's going to help. The more they read, the better readers they're going to be. Is there anything else? And along with the reading, we have a program to try to help them, encourage them to read. And it's called Book It. So what we do is we work along with Pizza Hut. Now, this only starts in October, which gives us some time to really get them reading a little bit better. And it ends in March. So we're talking six months and here's what we're asking we're asking for each kid to read 10 minutes for 20 days now that's in addition to their reading book this is something that interests them something they choose that they want to read about mm -hmm. they'll do that 10 minutes for 20 days now if they do that for all six months they get a cool reading trophy at the end of the school year. Now, this is not something they do in kindergarten, so this is something brand new. Really exciting for a first grader to win or to earn a trophy. Another thing that goes right along with reading is phonics, and I get to teach them phonics. That is, why do we read that word the way that we read it? Phonics is a study of the letters and their sounds and their special sounds and, and the rules of the vowels. I've learned so much just from teaching phonics because I've never really thought about the reason why this is a long vowel or this is a short vowel, but I get to teach them that so that they can apply that to all the words that they learn. There will be daily seat work with this. Um, some of it will be graded and there'll also be weekly phonics test. And I'll try to go ahead and send those words to you on RenWeb so you can study those words with your children. They are, most of the time, spelling words they've already had. So kind of a spiral review there where they're going back over those words. Along with phonics is language. This is just trying to get them to develop those language skills and those writing skills. And What's a sentence? Begins with a capital letter, ends with a period. Different kinds of sentences. Again, there'll be seat work with this and sometimes it'll be graded. Now, I also teach spelling. Spelling is not something they had in kindergarten, so this is brand new for them. Now, we won't start spelling until September. That gives me a little time to work on those letters and those sounds and those vowels. But then in September, what we'll do is we'll start with short vowel words, very simple words that first week. I'm kind of get them into it a little bit. I will send the list home to you if you'll help me study that list with your child. Mm -hmm. Every Monday, I'll have spelling homework. All they have to do is write the word one time each, and then they'll turn it back in, and I'll give them a hundred just for doing that 
homework. Now, you'll want to go over those words with them all throughout the week. Now, there's no assigned homework except for that Monday homework, but I know with my son, I always would give him a practice test and we would work on those words that he missed. Those were the words that I would really focus on, not the words he already knew. So the, hopefully the list gets smaller and smaller as you're working each night on those words. Um, and the test will always be on Friday, unless I tell you something different there. All right, I am the math teacher. Yay, I love math, and some of you love math. And we, got, we get to do a lot of hands-on things with math. Now, this year, because of COVID, they each have their own little math kit. So they will not be sharing any of those little math manipulative things that they're gonna be using to learn math concepts. They're gonna have their own little kit. So that's one of the things we're doing different this year to, to try to help with the COVID and the spread of that uh, virus. But anyway, one of the most important things that they need to learn in first grade is their addition and subtraction facts. Now, we're gonna go over those just about every day. Have some little flashcards, maybe play some games. Um, a lot of those things have to be memorized. I need your help. You need to help your child with those math facts. They need to learn those before they get out of first grade. That's the basics for second, third, fourth, fifth, on into high school. They've got to know those basic addition and subtraction facts. I would get some flashcards. You can go to the Dollar Tree, you can go to Walmart, or you can make your own using index cards. But you will see as they bring their daily math pages home, you will see what math facts they are working on for that week. And I will also send you in our little orientation packet, I will also send you uh, some of those math facts that we're going to be working on and learning for the whole year. So work on those for me. Um, then we will uh, have some graded seat work pages during the week, things that they do for me in class, so they will be graded. Um, and then we have unit tests. Now, I don't have a unit test every week like Ms. Jarman has with her phonics test. It may be every six lessons. It may be ever, every ten lessons. Uh, but I'll try to send you a, a little note uh, through Class Dojo and just let you know, hey, tomorrow's gonna be uh, a math test. So maybe you can go over some things uh, that maybe we've been doing for that week. All right, and then I also get to teach science. I know a lot of you like science and hopefully we'll be able to do some of our um, experiments too. Uh, we'll see what kind of experiments. We, last year we grew some little flowers. Um, we uh, did a lot of different things. We, maybe some science, uh, some weather video things that we can do that you could maybe make a video and send some fun things, but science is another thing and it's not graded, so it's kind of just more fun. Uh, and then another thing that I teach is handwriting. Uh, it's a called a precursive handwriting. Now they won't be graded, but I will be checking it to make sure that they are making sure their letters are on the line and they're uh, writing them the way that they should. They're forming their letters the way they should. So this is very important too, that you help them at home when they are writing. Uh, you may want to take some of those things that you see every day uh, from their uh, daily lessons and say, hey, let's work on those T's today, or let's work on those W's. Whatever letter we're working on, you can help them at home uh, and show them how to do it. I'll be sending you a form on or, um, when you come to our scheduled conference, and uh, I'll show you a form, and it'll show you how we make our letters. Because these letters are maybe be, uh, be a little bit different than the way you were taught to make letters. I know they are a little bit different than the way I was taught when I was younger. So you may have to look at that uh, and just see how to make it and help your child with that. And we have one more subject and it is history. And I get to teach history and we have a brand new history curriculum. Um, I've gone through it this summer and it is awesome. It's really amazing. It has such deep critical thinking skills in it. Um, I'll be teaching about community helpers and needs and wants, about our history, about North Carolina. I'm so excited to get to do some of those things, but then there's some real good, real world applications. So I'm excited to see what your child is gonna come up with on this. History is not graded, just like science is not graded. So the first day of school is Friday, August 20th. First, hey. and it is a half 
day. So we will be dismissing at 11.30, which means no lunch will be served, okay? So at 11.30, and remember the pickup for first grade, if they're going to first grade pickup, is use that Highway 258 um, entrance and we'll be under the breezeway and we'll walk the kids out to you. So you stay in your cars. Good drive through service there for you. <laughs> All right, let's talk a little bit about our grades. We are on a 10 point grading scale. And that means 90 to 100 is an A, and 80 to a 90 is a B, and so forth. Um, if your child makes all A's all year long without any B's, they will be on the principal's list. In fact, each nine weeks, if they have all A's, they'll be on the principal's list. And then the AB would be the honor roll, which that's fine. That's mm -hmm. good too. All A's are good. All A's and B's are good. We want your ch children to do the very best that they can. If they're a C student, hey, that's okay. If that, if that, As long as they are doing their best, then that's what we want them to do. Um, at the end of the year, we are going to have hopefully an awards day we didn't get to have it last year but hopefully this year and if we do we get to pass out like they get little trophies for the uh, scholastic the one that made the highest grades in first grade for the whole year and then we have like a little christian testimony award and that's how um who is the most christ-like in our class who is very kind and and sharing and wanting to help others, those kind of things that we're looking for. And then we have like a Trojan Award. That's the one that has a good attitude and always wants to do their best and, and wanting to be a helpful person. Uh, and then we have some little certificates that we give out like all A's for the principal's list and AB honor roll and then subject awards and, and things like that. But that's at the end of the year, uh, our very last day called awards day. They don't usually do that in kindergarten. Hopefully we'll get to do that this year in first grade. <laughs> okay, <coughs> excuse me. All right, now morning drop off. Uh, this Friday, or Friday when we start, and then every day after that, you're going to drop your child outside and let them come in. Uh, parents will not be allowed inside the building. I hate that. We enjoy seeing you in the mornings and seeing how everybody, what kind of mornings that everybody had. But this year, because of COVID, we can't do that. So you're just gonna have to drop them at uh, the cafeteria door, or if you're coming to morning care, you would let them come in through the breezeway entrance. So this year, that's different. So if there's something that we need to know, if your child had a bad morning, you might could just drop it, you know, put it in a note and put it in their book bag and then say, all right, give this to Miss Edwards or give this to Miss Jarman. And then we can kind of know some things were going on since you are not gonna be able to come in and tell us those things. And just so you know, that first few days, there will be other teachers, teachers that are teaching higher grades that are out in the hallways, helping those younger ones to get to the right classroom. Miss Edwards and I will be right at the door, ready to receive them. So just know they're gonna be in good hands. We're gonna take great care of them. Alrighty, now let's talk about this, which is not my favorite subjects to talk about, is behavior. I know we're going to have a good, good, good first grade year, but there have to be consequences if they don't follow uh, and they're not a, a obedient. Now, what I use is called a clip chart behavior plan, and I have like this little chart, uh, and I have some clothespins, and on it, I'm going to be uh, looking for if they turn their homework in on time, uh, if they are obedient when I ask them to do something, they do it right then. Uh, what about if they're wasting time? Like, they're supposed to be doing their seat work, but they're playing with their pencils. Um, what about attitude? If I ask them to do something, <sighs> I don't want to do that, I don't want to read today. Oh no, we want to have a good attitude in first grade. Um, their conduct, talking, like I know first graders talk. I, I understand that and I am totally for it. But we have to be quiet at some times when Miss Edwards and Miss Jarman are up there talking or it will be chaos and they won't learn anything. So they're gonna have to learn to, there are times we have to be quiet and there's times that they can talk and we will give them those times. I assure you they will have plenty of time to talk. 
Uh, but anyway, those kinds of things. Now, if your child, we have these clips, they stay on this little clip which it says good morning or good day, and they stay there. Okay, if they do something especially good, like we're in the hall and everybody's talking except for Susie, I'm going to say, man, Susie, you are doing a great job. Would you go clip up? And she might clip up and then maybe get a little sticker or something because she did a good job. She did something out of the extra. She did something extra. But suppose we were in the hall and everybody's quiet. They're doing what they're supposed to do. And Johnny says, oh, look at her. She's, oh, and he starts laughing. Mm, he has to come back and he has to clip down. Because to remind him that when Miss Edwards or Miss Jarman says, we have to be quiet, it's quiet time. So those kinds of things, it's clip, clip chart is what I use. And if they clip down all the way to the chart, that means that's twice. Then sometimes they have to walk during recess, maybe five, ten minutes, so just let them think about what they did that was wrong. And I will send a note home to you, or I will text you and let you know, hey, Johnny needs to learn to talk when he needs to and then to be quiet when he's not. So I'll be contacting you and letting you know. If you don't hear anything from Miss Edwards or Miss Charmin, then hey, we're doing good. You don't have to worry. And I'm not going to contact you every time they do something that is not necessarily correct. For instance, if I have to tell them sometimes two or three times to, to stop talking, I'm not going to text you every time. Will you please tell him to stop talking? Will you please? No. I'm going to handle that. It's things that maybe I cannot handle that they are doing all the time that I will contact you with. All right, then Miss Jarman is doing something a little different. Now, what I'm looking for is exactly what Miss Edwards said. But instead of a clip chart, I'm going to use that class dojo. Now, you already have hopefully signed up for class dojo. You won't see this part of the side of things. But what I'm going to do, if I catch a child doing something good, instead of clipping up, they get a point. Or if I catch them doing something they shouldn't be doing that we've been over a couple of times, then they're going to lose a point. And then those points accumulate. And as they get 10, there's a prize. As they get 20, there's a prize. And, and the prizes continue to build. So our behavior, we're looking for the exact same things. Mm -hmm. Just the way that we're showing it to the children is slightly different there. Now, as far as contacting the teacher, we are here for you. We want to hear from you, but please know we might not be right on a text if it's during the school day. And we're very dedicated to teaching while we have them sitting there in the classroom. So it'd be better to contact us after school. Um, and saying that, we would love for you to contact us anytime from 3.15 to 8 o'clock at night. That still gives us some family time if we need that in there as well. Um, our phone numbers are there. Um, please, if you have any questions, you know, you're free to contact us. Um, if you have a homeroom question, make sure that you're contacting your homeroom teacher. And then, based on the subjects, what you have a question from, just contact that teacher there. Mm -hmm. Now, we would normally say, if you have any questions, raise your hand and ask, but we can't do that. So, if you have any questions, would you write them down when you finish watching this video? And then, when you come to your scheduled conference on that Thursday, which is August the 20th, bring those questions with you, and we will try to answer them the very best that we can. Thank you so much for watching this orientation video. We've enjoyed talking to you and making this. We really look forward to meeting you though in person, which will be on Thursday, August 20th. Bring those questions, bring the children's supplies. We really want to get that on Thursday so we can have a great first day on Friday, August 21st. Bye-bye. Bye, see you Thursday.